Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today because today we are finally going to be doing another dinosaur piece. It's been quite a while since I've done a dinosaur. I can't even remember what the last dinosaur project was. But today we are going to be making some dimorphodons. I figured I'd try to make about three of them. That way I could put them in my shop and more people would have an opportunity to get them. I've been trying to do that more with pieces and make multiples of them. That way I can put more in my shop. Anyways, let's get started on the project. Now with this piece, I wanted to try something a little bit different with the head. So I'm going to be starting off with a poseable resin beak that I casted earlier. I made this a while back. There's a tutorial on how I ended up doing the beaks and stuff and then making molds so I can make more of them. So I'll leave that link down below. But basically this one was an extra one that I made and I never used it and I figured let's see if we could actually sculpt a head onto it and turn it into something different. Now at first I thought the easiest way to do this would be to sculpt the top portion of the head first, bake it, and then do the bottom jaw. But I found that doing this was a little bit difficult so what I'm actually going to do is sculpt the teeth first on the top and bottom jaw and kind of lay everything out to make sure they fit. And then once I have that done we can start working on the rest of the head. So I'm basically just taking little pieces of clay to use as the teeth. I'm laying them out and I'm kind of blending them into the resin. I'm doing my best to try and make a even transition, but at worst case, I'll end up covering this up with more clay. So I'm just trying to get them in the position to where they can like crisscross where the mouth opens. Once I have the teeth in place and I like how they look, they move with the jaw, nothing scrapes too much or anything like that, I'm going to end up baking them for just about 20 to 30 minutes, not too, too long. I just want to do kind of a pre-bake. And the temp I'm using is 275 Fahrenheit. For the rest of the head, I'm going to start building up the clay, just kind of laying out the basic shape that I need for the head. And I'm going to add a good chunk of clay to the back portion of the beak that we're building everything off of. So I'm going to lay all that out and kind of blend everything together to make it nice and smooth. And then try to figure out where I want all the details, like the nostrils and the eyes. And then once I'm happy with how everything looks, I'm not going to go super detailed with this piece. Um, I'm going to put this in the oven for about 45 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit. Now, I do want to point out that I am putting resin in the oven. It is safe to bake resin at very low temps. Um, just make sure to keep an eye on everything. I always say this, if you put something different in the oven, just make sure you're next to it and watching it the entire time just in case, because you never know if something weird will happen. But yes, you can put resin in the oven at low temps. I just recommend keeping an eye on it. So while we have our head baking, I'm going to end up demolding all the claws that we're going to use to make some poseable feet. So I made these earlier yesterday and they're done curing so I can take them out of the mold. And I'm just gonna glue these onto some cardboard so they're easier to hold onto and we can paint them. I'm gonna do the same thing to some claws that I'm gonna have on the wings. These were also cast out of resin. Now for painting with the claws, I'm gonna make it really simple. I'm going to basically primer the entire claw with a black. Just go over it until I have a nice solid black on all of the claws. Once that's done drying, I'm then going to pick a color that I want to do the claws themselves, not the entire toe or foot, and I'm just going to paint the claw. So for this, I picked kind of a lighter blue and I'm just going to go over the claws. And then when it comes to the head, I'm going to be painting the inside of the mouth a solid black color. So I'm going to do that first, and then afterwards we're going to start painting the outer portion of the head. And the fabric that I'm going to use for the body is going to be kind of a green, so I'm going to be matching that color for the outer portion of the head. So I'm going to get everything painted green, and then once that's dried, we can start painting our details, like painting the teeth, which I decided we're going to match the claws that we have, and then painting the eyes, nose, and adding some stripes on the head just because I felt like adding a little bit more detail.
Okay, so we have all of our clay and resin pieces finished. So let's get started on the sewing and putting everything together. So our pattern is a little bit weird looking. Um, it's uh, set up a little bit differently, but I wanted to try something just different in the shape of the body. So we have our wings, our main body, the back, our neck, just all the different parts that we need to make our dimorphodon. So let's get started on sewing all the markings together for each piece because I am going to have some pieces black and green and I need to sew all of those together. So basically the pieces for the neck, the body, all of these are kind of broken up into two different colors. So I need to sew those together first and then we can start sewing the body together. So with the belly, this has a left and right. I've already sewn the green and black pieces together for each side, and now I'm just gonna take the two pieces and sew these together. Now the fabric for the tail is connected to the back portion of our Dimorphodon's body. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the bottom portion of the tail, I'm going to pin both of these pieces together, and I'm going to sew these two layers together. And then once we have that together, we can start sewing the neck pieces onto the back and the belly piece. So I'm just going to connect these to the body pieces. And then I'm going to take the belly and the back of the Dimorphodon and we're going to start sewing the leg fabric in place on both of these. For the wings, I've tried to make these as simple as possible and I've used this design for other pieces, kind of like with my fox bats. So I just ended up making a smaller version of the wings that I made for my fox bats. So the fabric for the wing just kind of folds in half, we can sew it together, flip it right side out, end up sewing the lines into the wing, that way we can put a wire into them. And then we have the top portion, which is more of the arm portion of the wing that we'll sew onto the top of the wing. And then once I have the wings sewn together, I'm going to take the claws that I've made for the wings and we're going to glue them in place where the end of the arm portion goes. So I'm just going to glue those in place. They're not going to be connected to the wireframe at all. The wireframe actually goes past this point. So I'm going to get those glued in place. I'm going to get my wireframe that I made ahead of time and we can start putting everything together on the wireframe. So I'm going to start by adding the wings and I'm just going to run them over the wires for the wings. And then I can take our head and we can glue this onto the wire for the neck. For the back of the head, I've left a kind of indent, that way I have a spot to push the wire into place. And I'm just going to fill that with glue and put the wire into that place hold it, let it dry and everything, and then we can take the fabric for the back of our Dimorphodon and start gluing it around the base of the head. We're going to do the same thing with the under portion of the Dimorphodon and we're going to glue it to the bottom jaw basically. You'll want to let these dry for a little bit and then we can start sewing and closing up the neck. So I'm just going to sew down both sides of the neck until we get to where the wings are going to go. And then we're just going to start sewing the wings in place going down the sides of the body. While we're doing this, we are stuffing the body. So as you go, just kind of keep adding stuffing as you get more and more room for the stuffing. It'll make it a lot easier than stuffing it when you get to the very end. Once we have the wings in place on the body, we're just going to continue sewing and we're going to go down the front portions of the legs. And we're going to stop once we get to the very end of them. And then for the feet, I made these poseable. I have another tutorial if you want to see how to make plush poseable feet. I'll leave it linked down below along with the link to see how I made the beak that we used to make the head. So both of those tutorials are linked down below if you're curious on any of that. 
but right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect our posable feet onto our wire frame and this is done the exact same way that my clay feet would be added. So there's just a little bit of extra wire and I'm going to wrap that wire onto the wire for the leg. So we're just going to combine both of the wire frames. Once that's in place, you'll take the fabric for the leg and you'll start sewing it around the base of the foot. If this was a clay foot, you would end up just gluing it. Once we have that in place, we're just going to finish stuffing the rest of the body and closing everything up. Now at this point, I thought for a little bit that I was done, but it just kind of felt like I was missing something and I realized that I was missing the webbing that connects the tail and the legs together. So I ended up making a really quick pattern and sewing some fabric in between that to fill the gap. So I'm gonna use the same fabric that I used for the wings and I'm just gonna sew this in place. It's actually got a good grip on me. <laughs> I didn't think you could hold on so tight. Okay guys, and here are the dimorphodons I made. I've got two of them back here and one of them right here. <laughs> And like I said at the beginning of the video, these three will be in my Etsy shop, so if anyone wants to give them a new home, you can check the links down below. Also, I have a bunch of different art supplies linked down below, so if you're interested in making your own Dimorphodon, you can check those out as well. Now these links are affiliated links, so if you buy anything through them, it does help support the channel. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching, make sure to like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!